The game Spearfarer tells a powerful story without voice acting of any kind. The story is communicated to the player through the use of simple dialogue boxes, like these ones. And of course, the developers over at Thunder Lotus Studios are not alone. This is a common practice amongst both indie developers and even some larger studios. I'm guessing because it keeps production simpler and easier to manage for small teams. It's embarrassing to say, but I've never really built a proper dialogue system like these ones. You would think after a year of learning game development, I would have, but I guess I was just focused on other things. I'm sure I can build one in about 10 minutes, right? Wish me luck. I'm starting with this sample scene I've put together using a few free assets from Itch. I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible to start, really just adding sprites, tile sets, and basic animations. Then I'm going to add a couple NPCs that our main character can talk to. The merchant and this guy. So we've got three objects to start. One for the main player, then one for each NPC. To start, I want to figure out how our player is going to recognize when he can talk to an NPC. I don't want to add a check for every individual NPC like this, mainly because I'm lazy and because the best programmers are lazy programmers. So instead of doing this, I want something reusable. One way to do this is by creating a separate object, like a generic dialog prompt object. I want the prompt object to be configurable with data for the dialogue lines, maybe a portrait of the character speaking, but otherwise not tied directly to any NPC object. If you're wondering why I'm not using inheritance, it's because inheritance is evil, sometimes. This is a bit of a personal preference, but because GameMaker does not have multiple inheritance, the parent hierarchies can get long and complicated quickly. Instead, I want to compose multiple independent objects together. Let's look at building out the dialogue prompt object. To start, let's keep it simple and just show a dialogue notification, an exclamation point above the prompt. First step is to check for collisions. So in our player step event, we can check for the space bar being pressed. I know I'm going to need that later. And then if there is a collision with any of the dialogue prompts. If we do run into one of those instances, i.e. nearby dialogue does not equal no one, then we can do whatever we want with that object. Let's start with checking if the space bar is pressed versus not. If the space bar is pressed, we know that we're going to want to show some sort of dialogue box. So I'm just going to add a function show dialogue box for now. It's not implemented, but we'll get to it. Otherwise, I'm going to set the dialogue prompt to active. We can use active to figure out if it should be showing that notification sprite above it or not. Then I also want to completely stop the player from doing anything if it's marked as being in a state called talking. So if self.talking equals true. That handles the scenario where we are colliding with a dialogue prompt. Now if we don't, I'm just going to loop over all of the dialogue prompts and set them to active false, which should be good enough. So that's everything we need for the player right now. But it's still not going to actually work. We need to update the dialogue prompt object. Looking at the create event of the dialogue prompt, we're going to need active to decide if it's going to show that notification or not. Then the sprite to show the instance, if there is one, and then the width and the height of the sprite so that we can position it. Otherwise, I think we're just going to need three methods on this. Show dialog box, which we won't do anything with now, but that gets called when the player hits the space bar. Then show notification and hide a notification. 
our show notification is going to need to actually create that notification instance. So to start, we can check if there's already an instance of the notification and return out early because we don't want to create duplicates. Otherwise, we're going to find the X and Y position where we need to put the notification. This is essentially just in the middle horizontally of the prompt and then up a bit so that we can have it showing floating above the prompt. Then we're just going to create an instance. I'm using an object called empty object. It's literally empty and then assign a sprite index to it of the notification sprite and then track that instance using the notification instance variable. That's it for showing notifications. Then we need to be able to hide them when the player walks away from that collision zone. Hide is going to be pretty simple. If the notification instance does not exist, there's nothing to hide. So again, just return early. Otherwise, we're going to destroy the instance, reset notification instance to no one and then deactivate the prompt so it doesn't continually try to create a new one. Now let's look at the step event. Step event's gonna be pretty straightforward now that we did all the logic in those methods. So essentially, if the prompt is not active, we'll hide the notification, otherwise we'll show the notification. One little visual thing to make it feel uh, a little bit more alive is I'm going to apply a sign function, a sign wave to the Y position of the notification instance. So that's going to give it the bob up and down. The next step is to actually show some sort of dialog box at the bottom of screen when the player hits the space bar. Something simple just like this, character portrait over on the right, and then some text over on the left. Our dialog prompts have those couple of variables for a dialog file and then a sprite. I've put together a couple of character portrait sprites for both both NPCs. And then the dialog is really simple right now. It's just a JSON file with an array of strings where each array item is the next line of dialog to display. Now our prompt, we need to implement that show dialog box, which remember fires when the user has the space bar. Here I'm just going to find the instance of the player, send them to that talking state so that it freezes them, hide the notification, and then create an instance of a new object called dialog box. The dialog box is actually going to be responsible for displaying at the bottom of the screen. So I have a few helper functions in the create event of the dialog box. Load dialog, next line, and has next line. So we're going to load the lines and keep track of the index, total line count, and then the current line. Then I'm going to use the draw GUI event on dialog box to draw a black rectangle at the bottom of the screen, fill up the screen width, except for some padding on the side, then draw the portrait over on the right, and then draw the current line over on the left. Now one final thing here, it's just gonna show the current line. Each time the player hits a space bar, I want it to just go through all of the dialog lines. So go to the next line. So in the dialog box step event, I'm going to check for a space bar hit there, grab the next line, and then reassign current line. If there is no next line, then I'm gonna have the dialog box self-destruct, destroy itself, find the player, and then reset the player's state back to not talking. I created a full scene, dropped the dialog prompt objects directly on top of the NPCs, assigned their portraits and their dialog files. If you are a beginner, try to add some of your own features. This is far from a fully working solution. 
It'll help you learn to try to extend it. What if NPCs have multiple pages of dialogue? What if they can ask questions? What if they want to customize the location of the box? Maybe move it at the top of the screen? Or what about changing the color of the backgrounds? Give it a shot.